Hi everyone, my name is Kanal Batra and I'm a senior technical evangelist here at AWS. And we're joined by some pretty special guests from the service team for uh, CloudWatch uh, Container Insights. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves? All right, thank you, Kunar. Uh, my name is Mark Shaney. I'm a principal product manager for CloudWatch. Hey, guys. My name is Mihir. Uh, I'm a senior manager for CloudWatch. My name is Akshay Ram. I'm a product manager with AWS Container Services. So let's get to the, the first question here and kind of table set for our audience at home. What is CloudWatch? Let's start from there. It's a great question. So CloudWatch is a fully managed observability service that gives you complete visibility into health, performance, and availability of cloud and on-prem resources and applications. And uh, it helps customers measure, diagnose, understand, and improve how their services and resources are operating. Uh, customers do four things with CloudWatch today. Uh, collect, monitor, act, and analyze. Uh, so they collect telemetry from structured and unstructured data sources, uh, monitor using dashboards uh, up to one second resolution, uh, act using alarms and events, and they do things like uh, uh, terminate EC2 instances that are gone bad or restart uh, a broken instance and things like that and then analyze using our metric math function to analyze time series data, as, as well as log analytics uh, uh, using CloudWatch logs insights queries. And so I took a stat, I was looking at this last night, and it blew my mind, but I'll say it for the audience as well. Um, CloudWatch monitors more than a quadrillion metric observations. That's a large number. What is a quadrillion? What is a quadrillion? <laughs> a thousand trillion, thousand but what trillion. does that mean, right? Um, triggers more than 3.9 trillion events and ingests more than 100 petabytes of logs per month. So this is crazy. This is massive. Um, I guess the first question is, is this for every service, the majority of services? How does that work? I think the important thing is it's not about just the, the numbers that you've shared, but more about the, the, the scale, the ability for the platform for CloudWatch in itself to be able to scale to meet the demands of our customers. And I think that's really what it's all about. Right, right. And then the second part of the service name, Container Insights. What's Container Insights? What is Container Insights? Well, Container Insights is a fully managed service for monitoring and troubleshooting your container environment, and most importantly, be able to alarm on some of these metrics. So it provides pre-built visualization and automated aggregation based on tasks, pods, uh, your clusters, and services and namespace for Kubernetes in your environments. Most importantly, from a use case standpoint, it's all about monitoring and troubleshooting and uh, also health and performance monitoring, and also task and pod uh, optimization. And again, for our audience, just want to, again, table set. We mentioned a lot of terminology over there, uh, ECS, Kubernetes, uh, containers. Why don't we just step back a bit and just talk about what some of these terminologies are, what's a container, I guess. Let's start off with that. Yeah, so a container is essentially a way for application developers to package their applications and their dependencies and run it across compute environments. And the fundamental benefit of containers is it decouples operations from application development. It just it doubles down on agility. There are many ways to run containers at AWS. You can use ECS and EKS, and that's the high level where customers usually start, and that's the orchestration. And the orchestration essentially makes it easy to schedule containers. They have integrations with CICD. They have uh, the ability to schedule and, and, and bin pack and optimize running containers and, and for cost efficiency. And finally, there's AWS Fargate, which essentially doubles down on the agility and simplicity mission by removing the, the need for customers to even think about infrastructure. That makes sense. Um, so why should our customers care then about Container Insights? Can you go a little bit about that? Yeah, so, so first of all, people want to be able to monitor their containers and the performance of their containers. In this ephemeral world of containers, things come up and down and have to be able to adapt to this growing workloads that customers have. We recently launched e, um, e support for EKS and Kubernetes back in May, 20, uh, May 20th at KubeCon in Barcelona. And now we've also added ECS support in Open Preview. So this gives us the ability to natively collect metrics from ECS on EC2 and AWS Fargate from any running containers, tasks, services running in your environment. Awesome. Um, and then how do customers get started with Container Insights? Um, so for ECS, uh, we collaborated with the ECS team, and it's a simple checkbox. You just go to the ECS management console, click a box, and you're done. Uh, it's already pre-built into the ECS agent. Uh, the latest version of the agent uh, has, the uh, has the benefits that uh, you get from Container Insights. So you may need to update the agent, but there is no new software to install. Uh, and for EKS and Kubernetes, uh, you have a three-step process, very simple. So you update an IAM role policy. You deploy our containerized uh, agent with a few YAML files, and then you deploy Fluentd agent using one YAML file, and you're done. Awesome. Um, and then uh, 
So we talked about this. How do customers now troubleshoot and debug application failures? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think the important thing is, is that Container Insights not only focuses on one element, right? It's all about the observable stack, bringing in metrics, logs, and traces all together so you can create a full end-to-end -end experience. So ultimately, how do you collect the metric to be able to isolate spikes that are happening in your environment, whether it's compute-related, whether it's CPU, memory, disk, um, or network-related, and then be able to drill down into specific running application logs or distributed traces coming from AWS X-Ray. And that's what makes the whole difference between uh, other solutions is that everything is built within one platform. And how does pricing look like for this? So good, good question as well. So pricing is not new for CloudWatch. It's all using existing dimensions. So we're looking at CloudWatch metrics for the metrics being collected from your environment. Uh, and that varies. Pre metrics that are pre-aggregated by tasks or pods or by services or by clusters. And then you have uh, the logs and gestures bits. So as part of application logs that are coming in, performance logs, uh, these are existing dimensions, so this is the ingestion cost and then the storage cost. So I would recommend to look at our pricing page for more details around pricing uh, across different regions. Perfect. And then some of the top use cases that come to your mind for uh, Container Insights? So yeah, we talked a little bit about the use cases uh, in, the, in the first answer. So ultimately, monitoring and troubleshooting is an important aspect. The ability to understand out of the box, right, with automated dashboards, what's going on in your environment, be able to drill down very quickly so that you don't have to figure out contextually deep link into uh, application problems uh, through your application logs, your traces. Um, so that's the monitoring and troubleshooting. Health and performance, right? You want to make sure that when people reserve the capacity for these containers, these tasks, uh, or these pods, that they're actually making use of these, these resources. If they're not making use, you're just wasting compute capacity. So ultimately, you want to be able to alarm and be able to educate, create awareness within your teams to be able to optimize these, uh, uh, these, 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 these um, constraints, right? These compute capacity constraints that are imposed on your containers. Make sure that you're reserving the right amount based on what you're using. And then last, sorry, last but not least, task and, task and pod cluster uh, performance optimization, which I think covers a little bit about yeah. what I was mentioning. Before. Sounds good. So yeah. I'm excited. Let's, let's see a little more. Let's switch over to a demo and then see how this works. All right, sounds good. All right, good. So we're starting off with the ECS cluster here. So I think what Mahir mentioned is that it's the, it's the ease of use and the native integration with ECS that's a beauty over here. So ultimately, what you do is when you create, there's a, a couple different ways. You can do it directly through the console or using our API CLIs. Account settings uh, allows you to be able to enable container insights directly through a checkbox. So whenever you're creating new clusters in your environment, it will automatically be enabled with container insights. Pretty simple. And then ultimately, from a cluster standpoint, if you create a new cluster, you also have the ability to do this at a cluster level. So when you're creating a cluster, you have, again, the checkbox. Because it's set up at the, uh, the, the account level, it'll automatically be checked, but you can enable or disable it on a cluster level. So pretty simple to get going. Yeah. So let me show you the results. I think that's the most important thing. So once this is enabled, uh, ultimately, you're going to get visibility into your container environments. Um, so what I'm going to do here is under the CloudWatch land, uh, landing page, you're going to see a new container insights icon. So when you click on the Container Insights menu, this automated dashboard will automatically give you visibility across all the different clusters in your environment. So I have ECS clusters in this case. Since we were talking about uh, ECS, let's go ahead and see the clusters. So in this case, I have visibility across my ECS on EC2. I have visibility across my Fargate clusters. And I also have visibility across my Windows clusters. So this gives me full visibility around my compute utilization, uh, CPU memory, um, also around container instances, so specific uh, EC2 instances that are being launched. So this is applicable to my uh, EC2 instance uh, cluster, as well as task counts and services running in my environment. At any point in time, you can drill into more of these performance, this high cardinality data that we collect around containers directly by clicking on actions and view performance logs. If I go into a specific detail into a Fargate cluster, as an example, I get more visibility into the tasks level to be able to understand and be able to quickly drill into specific areas of your clusters, be able to apply these time ranges that you have, and be able to debug any specific uh, containers that come up for these specific tasks that have been isolated. You get to quickly see CPU memory usage for the given tasks ID that are running, be able to see the storage compute capacity, as well as uh, storage rights, memory, and network. Let me go ahead and switch over to an EKS cluster in another region that I have here. You just mentioned one term there I just want to define for the audience. You mentioned it's great for high, seeing high cardinality data. Yes. That's just a database term, right? A large a number of unique data in a certain dimension? Correct. Unique, unique number of instances that we have for a given service. Uh, so uh, so for, as an example, the container ID is a very high cardinality because there's many of them that are very ephemeral in nature. A lot of them can come up. So this is where uh, you want to be able to uh, 
uh, make sure that your system can handle all these types of, 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 of scenarios. Another high cardinality data, somewhat high cardinality, are the number of hosts, as an example. Okay. So here you get to see the monitoring of all your hosts. You'll also notice this, this is a, actually an EKS, uh, the cluster nodes. You can easily create alarms on any one of these metrics, either at the node level or a cluster level. I think most, most importantly, people are always interested in the uh, pod levels. So let's go ahead and um, uh, you'll see here this was at the uh, node level. You also have the namespace. So if you have multiple teams developing in separate namespace, this will automatically aggregate the compute capacity across your, your compute utilization by those services so you know exactly what's using that compute capacity. So if you're trying to educate your teams how they can better optimize compute capacity or if they've just made a change, uh, they've deployed a new version of a pod or a task or anything else, you'll know how much more compute capacity they need so you can actually project and, and deploy the right um, compute capacity to your cluster. Unless you're using Fargate, which you don't have to really worry about that. But you may be more concerned about costs yeah. in that case. So let's go ahead and drill into a specific pod and, and show you what, what you can do from a pod standpoint. Uh, so let's go to all the way down, pods. So in a pod scenario here, what I want to be able to do is you may want to be able to isolate a specific service. You can easily search for these services. Low gen, not interested. This is a demo app, so this makes sense. You get FluentD. You know there's no hiding here. Every container that are running in your environment, you'll get to see more visibility. But most importantly, if I take a specific service here, I'm going to go ahead and filter an image service as an example. Go ahead and apply that. This will help me correlate the data that I have for a couple of different nodes here, be able to quickly look at what's going on and correlate this across all my metrics. But most importantly, be able to look at the application logs. So as, as Mihira was mentioning, we're using FluentD. FluentD is an open source project adopted by the CloudWatch, uh, sorry, by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And it is one of the most adopted ways of collecting logs. We wanted to make sure that we support this open source project. And ultimately, this gives you the ability to drill into these logs in context to the container that you're on and as well as the time window that you're in. Uh, so you can actually go and quickly look at the logs that you have. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And be able to look at all the metadata that we're decorating all of these log lines with. So this includes things like uh, the labels that you have. So you can easily slice and dice based on labels. Yeah. Uh, by namespace, by pod ID, pod name, and even a uh, container name, if, uh, container image name if you want. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you, you diagnose some of these applications. So let me give you an example of some of the pre-built dashboards that I also did uh, in this environment. So if I go into, let's do cluster overview uh, for this dev cluster. So this is an example, uh, CloudWatch Logs Insights, Corey. So CloudWatch Logs Insights, as uh, Mahir again mentioned, is the ability to analyze all of this rich metadata coming from from logs, from these performance events, these high cardinality events that I was mentioning, and bring that data all together and be able to summarize that for your team so that you understand exactly what's going on in your environment. So in this case here, by pod name, I get to see all of my containers that are running, the instance of my containers, the number of requested versus running, the ability of pod restarts, again, good metric that you maybe want to be able to look at, alarm yourself on yeah. if you're seeing a lot of restarts in your environment, and other uh, good metrics like failure metrics that you have. So these are all examples how you can use rich analytics to be able to better analyze and troubleshoot in, uh, issues in your environment. All right. Can you go back to that previous screen where you were kind of showcasing the logs right there and you're able to search for that? Um, that ability to search, is that new as well? That That's a good question. CloudWatch Logs Insight was actually introduced back in at reInvent last year. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are still trying to figure out what that is. It's, it's a rich, actually, let me... Let me actually go through a log and let me show you some of the examples of what we can do with these logs. I think a performance uh, logs is an example. So here's, let me talk, tell you a little bit more about CloudWatch Logs Insight. So CloudWatch Logs Insight is a simply advanced query language that helps you analyze all of the logs that you have in your environment. So what I'm going to do here, it allows you to put filters, limits um, uh, in your environment. Ultimately, you have the commands here on the left, the ability to add fields, filters, stats command. Uh, there's obviously a documentation that explains all of this for you. Source limit, parse. So parse helps you with uh, unstructured logs, um, one-liners like um, Nginx uh, Apache logs, where you can actually extract any of the uh, elements in the fields and be yeah. able to make these discoverable fields. So these are discoverable fields here. This is what we automatically detected. So for our performance events or application logs coming from containers, these are all JSON formatted. So we automatically detect JSON and can automatically uh, extract the field names or attribute names to be able to uh, add to your, to your search expressions. So in this case here, if I wanted to be able to learn more about image service and what's going on in my image service, I can do simple queries like uh, stats. Uh, let's do a count of um, log stream by uh, stream equal uh, standard error as an example. So there's two types of streams, standard error, standard error, standard out. 
What's probably more interested, interesting to look at at times is looking at your, your standard outstreams. And let's also do that because I want to do that by, um, by stream. Actually, let's start by stream here. Run query. So this will give me a, a count of all of the streams by uh, streams error. And if I would have done that right. Count stream. Uh, uh, just doing this live is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I'm noticing right away is this is so much better than regex, right? It, Actually it, it, having the ability to nobody, have a search nobody, language nobody to go to, through that. Nobody, nobody wants, wants to do regex. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me do another one by uh, container name as an example. That'll be maybe easier. Uh, but just gives me the logs, uh, the count logs of uh, uh, errors by container name. So it gives you an example, uh, container name or uh, Kubernetes. Actually, this is a different log. So do by containers, by Kubernetes host. There you go. We'll do something that actually exists. Um, but this gives you an example of what, what types of counts of, of different performance events coming from different hosts. You can go ahead and do all kinds of rich analytics, save that to your own dashboards. Any of the automatic dashboards that you saw before can also be saved to your own custom dashboard so you can uh, decide what you, what's important to you and how you want to alarm on these metrics. Perfect, perfect. So if our audience can get some takeaways for this service, I guess when you're running containers at scale, monitoring is hard, right? There are lots of moving parts, and that's really where Container Insights is the, the value right there, right? Seeing what's wrong, not letting... Um, pressure happening from your resources, not letting something get evicted, containers get evicted, yeah. uh, having monitors for that. I think it's also, what do you select, right? In these, these environments, if you're new to containers, or even if you're, you're very mature in containers, right, there's always certain metrics that are more important than others. Right. Same thing as logs, right? Which logs do you need? From a host standpoint, what are the logs that you need? From a, um, a data plane standpoint, what are the logs that you need? So we've already helped you with that because we've pre-curated, collected, selected the metrics and logs that you need to be able to get started. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, I have some other questions here for you guys. Um, first, where can our customers go to find out more? So there's a couple of things coming up. Uh, first, there's a what's new post for both uh, ECS and EKS, a container insights for ECS and EKS. If you also go to the CloudWatch uh, page, you have a getting started uh, link that you can go to to learn more about what's going on, which will also link you to the documentation. Uh, look for two blogs that are coming up shortly as well, for both for Container Insights for ECS and Container Insights for EKS. That will help you get started in uh, analyzing, monitoring, troubleshooting your environments. Perfect, perfect. And then uh, are any of you guys, or all three of you, are you going to be doing sessions here at AWS that our audience can tune into to watch live? Yeah, absolutely. I think from, um, from a, an observability standpoint, we have a container and anomaly detections from CloudWatch. That's happening at 5 o'clock today. I nice. would recommend you checking that out. And I think we've got some new things going on in logs here that I... Uh... Yeah, so, so we recently launched a Fluent Fit plugin for AWS. Okay. And that's essentially a resource uh, light footprint of Fluent D. And we, we want to talk about it and, and how it enables our customers with different use cases and also our partners to integrate with container services. Got it. And that's going to be coming up right after right this, after I believe, this. right? So uh, great. Our audience has something to look forward to. And we also have yeah. a launch pad as well for anomaly detection. So my colleague, uh, uh, Helen Lin, will be presenting at 345, I believe. So if you want to learn more about anomaly detection and how you can actually apply anomaly detection alarms to be able to Im improve or eliminate the alarm fatigue and static, creating static alarms, I'd, I'd recommend you checking out the, uh, the launch pad that's happening next. Awesome. And then right, we have cool. a little bit of more time left. So I just want one more question for you guys. Right. Um, how can the partner ecosystem take advantage of customer insights? Yeah, great, great question. So I think the partner ecosystem can always take advantage using our, our APIs that we have, right? So all the metrics that we enable, either from ECS or EKS, uh, we can actually use our, our get metric data APIs, using our get metric data API or get metric statistic API to be able to query those metrics and bring this into their, their solutions. Uh, same thing for CloudWatch logs. If you don't have a logging solution and you want to bring in those logs in correlation to other metrics that you're collecting, uh, you can actually do CloudWatch Logs Insights query using our, our APIs as well. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it was great having you here. Hopefully, our audience loved it. Um, thanks.